Slaughter, haven't even talked about yet. Uh, in the United States, cattle slaughter lines move at a rate of about 400 cattle per hour. Um, in Europe, the legal maximum is 75. In the UK, the legal maximum is 60 on animal welfare grounds. Their workers are better trained and better paid than our workers. So we have workers who are not as efficient as their workers slaughtering animals at seven times the rate, which is why we have all of the testimonials on GoVeg.com in the slaughterhouse cruelty section about animals routinely being skinned while they're still conscious. Cattle have their skins ripped off their bodies while they're still conscious. Pig slaughter lines in the United States move at 1,100 per hour. The legal maximum in Europe is 300. And again, our less well-trained, worse paid workers are slaughtering at almost four times the rate as slaughter workers in Europe. So that again, the testimonials from the workers indicate that animals routinely have their legs chopped off while they're still conscious, and pigs go into the scalding tanks and are drowned in the scalding hot water that is used to remove their hair. And then chickens. I mean, this is, you know, that was all bad. For chickens, it's even worse. Some years back, I was in the United Kingdom. I went to a conference of animal scientists who work on these issues. I mean, what these guys do and publish papers about, is they say, okay, we'll cram 100 pigs on the back of this truck, and we'll take them over the roads 12 hours, and we'll see how many of them arrive dead. Okay, now we'll cram 70 pigs on the back of this truck, and we'll take them over the roads, and we'll see how, you know, and they, they, I mean, they basically cause animals to suffer miserably in order to figure out what the idea. These guys are horrified by chicken and turkey slaughter in the United States. They think chicken and turkey slaughter in the United States is absolutely heinous. You know, no shrinking violets, no vegetarians, and they think that what we do to chickens and turkeys in the U.S. is absolutely hideous. And the reason for that is that the way chicken and turkey slaughter works is the animals are dumped out of these crates, they're hung in shackles, and then they hit this electrified water, which is an immobilization bath. The industry tries to call it a stunning bath. They've been trying to call it a stunning bath since we started screaming at, about it about six years ago. Up until that, all of the science, it's an immobilization bath. And that's all it does. It, is it, immob it immobilizes them. It doesn't stun them. It doesn't render them insensible to pain. It's set at a very low milliampage level so that it immobilizes them so that they're not moving when they hit the next slicer. In the EU, it's legally required to be set at 200 milliamps. In the US, it's set between 15 and 50. In the EU, the animals hit it, and 95% of them go into cardiac arrest. They're shot to death, you know, far from pleasant. You know, who wants to, you know, like sticking your finger in a light socket or something? Um, but at least it kills them. In the US, they're immobilized, but they have their throats slit, and they go into the scalding tank, and that's how they die, which is why these uh, scientists in the UK uh, at this UK conference were so horrified. 100% of chickens and turkeys who are slaughtered in the United States are still conscious, immobile, conscious, when their throats are slit. Many of them miss the throat slitting altogether because they're flapping around. They miss the stun bath, a mobilization bath. They miss the knife, knife uh, slicer. You know, maybe a wing goes off. Maybe their chest cavity gets ripped open. Um, and they go fully conscious into the scalding tank. According to the USDA, it's about 6 million animals a year. Um, who are still fully conscious and end up scalded to death in the United States. So you talk about eating misery. Uh, commercial fishing. This is, uh, I wish you could see this slide a little bit better because these are mouths. You know, these are mouths. Commercial fishing, um, in addition to the environmental catastrophe that all of the mainstream environmental groups are talking about, all of our world's fisheries being um, either depleted or in decline, from a cruelty standpoint, what you've got is these drift nets that are dragging along the bottoms of the oceans, grabbing everyone that they can find. 800,000 pounds in a single netting. They drag the animals up onto the deck, they dump the animals out, and these massive fishing trawlers have you know, these huge freezers. They slice the animals open. Many of the animals are dead by this point, but the animals who are alive, they slice open and toss them into the freezers, but that's how they die. They just slice them open. There's no welfare science on the open seas, um, and very little, none in the United States, a little bit, um, especially in Scandinavia for fish farms. But even fish farms, they funnel those, they feed those animals commercially fought, 
uh, caught fish. So even the fish farms takes about four pounds of commercially caught fish to make one pound of fish farm fish. It's the uh, throwaway fish from the commercial fishing who end up you know, fed to farm tuna or farm salmon or whoever else. From a cruelty standpoint, still absolutely hideous. So you can see this fish farm, it looks like a tub of writhing spam. You know, salmon will swim thousands of miles. So they'll swim up waterfalls. They're like these amazing, interesting, intelligent creatures. And you know, they're crammed into each animal with you know, five animals to the space of half a bathtub. Hideously cruel and unnatural. For me, it goes back to Socrates. The unexamined life is not worth living. You know, we owe it to ourselves to challenge ourselves, to say, you know, what does it mean that I care about the environment? What does it mean that I care about global poverty? What does it mean that I oppose cruelty to animals and worker exploitation? Now, I love this Paul McCartney quote. He says, it's staggering when you think about it. Vegetarianism takes care of so many things in one shot. Ecology, famine, cruelty. For me, integrity means, at the very least, not paying other people to do things that we couldn't do ourselves. You know, how many people would want to castrate a pig without pain relief or chop a chicken's beak off? You know, how many people would want to slit an animal's throat open? Percy by Shelley. Just one second. Uh -huh. said he was going through the police log and they were tipped off by a government official that there was an investigation done at the oh. city plant. Okay. Then he on the news release. Does that make sense to you? Well, the news release part doesn't, but the uh, tip off does because, yeah, we filed the complaint with the DA. So should we just tell him we'll be sending a news release tomorrow? If he wants yeah. something tonight, we'll just say we're sending out a release tomorrow. Yeah. We'll get it to you tomorrow. Yeah, I think so. All right. Sorry about the investigation we're breaking tomorrow. But, um, I don't know what I was saying. Oh, I love that quote. <laughs> um, Percy by Shelley, uh, in explaining his vegetarianism, he said, I want no part of anything that I can't write a pleasant poem about. I like that concept, you know. I want no part of anything I can't write a pleasant poem about. I mean, any of us could, I mean, if we're poets, we could write a pleasant poem about it. If not, we could at the very least participate in any aspect of getting plant-based foods to the table. But every aspect of getting animal-based foods to the table is morally problematic. You know, none of us would want to spend 15 minutes slicing animals' throats open. You know, none of us would even want to watch people slicing animals' throats open. So a reasonable question is, where is the integrity in paying other people to do things to animals that not only could we not watch it, not, excuse me, not only could we not participate in it, we wouldn't even want to watch it. 